Hello to all my story lovers. Welcome back in Story Time channel. I'm Pallavi reading interesting stories for you. Today I'm reading chapter number 23. Life's secret lessons. Written by the great Sudha Murthy and taken from the book The Day I Stop Drinking Milk. Now let's go through it. It was 1996. I knew that India had 25 states and 7 union territories and that a majority of us spoke a total of 30 languages. Each state had its own culture, tradition, dress code and folk art. I was aware of the great sages and writers of the land and know the names of most mountains and neighbors of our country. That was my India as I knew it. After joining Infosys Foundation that year, I learned that my perception of India was not India at all. My perception was only a statistical description of India. I realized that there is so much helplessness and poverty here. Poverty does not mean just a lack of money, but also lack of confidence. Money can be earned in the life, but confidence is easy to lose and very hard to gain back. I learned lessons that no book could ever teach me and no internet site could show me because I had access to real people. Very few people have this privilege. Still, I usually never know the real opinion of most people I converse with. The reason is that people whom I do not give money to criticize me and people who hope to receive money from me say that I am great. So I have made many enemies and only a few true friends. Now I understand why people at the top are always lonely. My first lesson. At a times I feel that only children tell the truth and are the real judges of one's talent. Once I was in Calcutta for the launch of children's book, children from various schools came and attended the event. As a part of the book launch, I had to read a few stories from my book. When I started reading, a young boy got up and innocently said, Auntie, you write well. But you don't read well. I look at him. He was around 12 years old and had intelligent and sharp eyes. His teacher was about to hush him when I stop her. Please allow him to speak. Children are unbiased and clear in their thinking. They say the truth and the truth alone. Maybe the passage of time changes them. But for now, let him say whatever he wants to say. Then I called the boy to me. I asked him, can you read the story for me? Of course, I can read it. I am an actor in my school and I know how to modulate the voice which you don't do. I agree. I am not an actress. I am only a writer. The child read the entire story with different modulations and I was quite impressed. I felt that I was meeting a genuine critic of my readings for the first time. That was my first lesson. Now the second lesson. My second lesson. As a part of my work for the foundation, I travel the corners of India, which I would not have done otherwise. 
our team walk through five national natural disasters like the earthquake in Gujarat, the tsunami in Tamil Nadu, and the Andamans, and the drought in Maharashtra and Karnataka, floods in Odisha, Karnataka, and Andhra Pradesh, and hurricanes in Odisha. Every disaster taught me my second lesson. I learned that there is limitation to human power and achievements and that even with money you cannot help everyone. You cannot substitute many things in life with money. Now my third lesson is, as I work with the foundation, my horizons change. I made the poorest of the poor and the most talented artists the victims of the natural disasters and the most successful people who climbed the ladder with their hard work. I saw many ungrateful receivers as well. All of them became part of my big canvas. The amazing thing I saw was that most times what people presented outside was never how it was inside. The moment you went near, their carefully constructed image started falling apart. When someone cheated me, I got upset and angry. I usually called that person and scolded him or her. I expressed my anger and disappointment to them. Even now, I remember many experiences of children cheating parents and vice versa. It was very disillusioning. A few years ago at the foundation, we reserve Monday mornings to give money to poor people to buy medicines for cancer treatment. These people usually bought letters from cancer hospitals. One day, my car was near the entrance gate of our foundation. I was waiting in the car for an umbrella since it had started raining. I look around and notice a car in front of me. A lady was sitting in the back seat of the car. I saw her remove her diamond earrings and then she got down from the car. I did not think much of it at the time. Soon I got umbrella and went to my office. There I saw the same lady with a letter asking us for some cancer medicine. If the incident had happened 10 years ago, I would have given her a piece of my mind. But now I smile at her and told her gently, Sorry madam, we can't give money to you. Cancer medicines are much cheaper than diamond earrings. There are many people who requires these free medicine more than you. Now I look at life differently. Most people do not have the same values when they get money. Money changes a person completely. Very few people can withstand the lure of money and they are difficult to find. I have learned that whenever there is money, people like to take advantage of the situation and maximize their return. Now my fourth lesson. I have also received many life lessons from the poorest of the poor. On one of my trips, I was visiting village. It was late evening and I stayed with a friend, Nero, who had a big house. His late grandfather was a well-known local language writer who had achieved great laurels during his lifetime. His grandmother kept talking about him and his awards. Nero took me aside and said, Sorry, my grandmother lives in the past. She does not understand that today many people have forgotten my grandfather even though he was a hero in the old days. I asked him, Will you show me the room with the awards that your grandmother described? He took me upstairs and opened a room full of dust. 
Of course, there were many awards there, citations and medals. There was also a box full of shawls and countless dusty volumes. He said, when my grandfather was alive, people used to visit him all the time. All his colleagues are dead now. We have hundreds of photographs, but we don't recognize a single person in them. We have so many books and grandmother doesn't even want to give them to a library. We don't know what to do with his awards. We can't keep them and neither can we throw them away. I live in Mumbai and have a small two-bedroom apartment. My children occupy one room and we occupy the other. I am the only heir to the family. Grandmother insists that I keep all these things, but I have realized that when a person passes away, what he may have collected materially over a period of time becomes irrelevant to the next generation. I can only keep one photograph of my grandfather and maybe one of his books as a memento. My children can't even read and write our native language even though they can speak it fluently. So his whole library is of no use to me. If my grandmother had allowed me to donate these books immediately after my grandfather's death, at least some people from his generation would have read them. Now these books are useless. Suddenly I realized that this was my next lesson. If we keep collecting material things, it becomes a burden to the next generation. It is better that we reduce our catch while we are alive. This was a great message and I started practicing it. Today, I immediately give away what I do not need. This is the fourth lesson. Now, another lesson we conclude in the next video. Till then, take care and share these videos with your friends. Thanks for watching guys.